чему сны I don't wanna leave her now You know I believe in how Somewhere in a smile She knows That I don't need no other lover That shows me I don't want to leave her now You know I believe in how You're asking me Will my love grow Well I don't Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the gorgeous George Harrison song, Something. There's so many beautiful things to check out in this. The harmonic structure and the way the chords move and all of that is just gorgeous. This is a kind of an acoustic arrangement. The original recording is very heavily layered, so I figured that it uh, might be more fun to kind of get into the nuts and bolts of it on one instrument, and I'll show you a couple of ways around uh, each of the chord sequences and the different uh, approaches that you might like to experiment with uh, yourself. So uh, let's get stuck in and check out a kind of a, a basic chordy version first. First of all, the first chord you hear is an F, and then there's the little melody line, and that's F, da, 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 E flat, G, and then we're to the verse, which is a C chord, F, 2, E flat, G, and then we're going to the C. Now, there are loads of different approaches to doing that, so I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail later on. I want to get through the basic chord progression, first of all, and some of the options there, and then we'll come back and explore uh, different approaches to incorporating that melody line with the chords. So, uh, getting back into the verses, we start with a C. Something in the way she C major sevens Just by lifting off the first finger to C7 Tracks me like no other F chord F with an E bass if you want just by lifting up the first finger to D7 Something in the way she G's me Now you could just stay on a G there but if you want this This little motion there it's a little bit uh, it's, it's that kind of motion there I'm playing a G, muting the thinner string with my third finger, so I've got a B as the top note. I often just play the bass note there and put my first finger down, first fret on the uh, second string. Shouldn't really be playing the D there, but it doesn't matter too much. And then to this G with the B bass, second finger, uh, second fret on the fifth string, little finger down, third fret of the uh, second string. Just a little movement there. Now, the next chord sequence is this A minor, A minor major 7, A minor 7 to D7. 
So you could fingering it that way. That's the, the easiest one, kind of. I'll show you what I think is a nicer one. So minor, that goes down one semitone. That goes down one semitone to A minor to the D7. But it is a little bit awkward fingering, and I don't particularly like the sound of it there in this song. So I've been using this other one. It, it's adding a ninth, so it's kind of slightly changing the harmony a bit. But this is open fifth string, seventh fret, fifth fret, open B string, and open E string. If you play that, then you can have A minor, A minor major seven, A minor seven to D seven. It's got a six in there as well, but it's, so it's kind of it's a six D seven six nine, I guess D thirteen, uh, whatever. It's just a D seven, and I'm letting the thinnest two strings uh, ring out. But I think that's a nice move. So that's the main sequence for the verses there. There are lots of different chord options, but again, for an acoustic one, I think having this little blend of uh, playing a few fancy pants chords and some interesting harmony along with those simple parts, I think works real nice. Uh, let me play it through again with just the chords and then we'll get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty. So F, da, ba, da, da, E flat, G, something in the way. He lifts up his first finger to get the C major seven. Then to C7, which goes so nice to F chord, with the E bass to the D7, in a way she G's with that little walking movement. I don't want to play A minor the easy way, I want to do it up here. I know I believe to D7. Okay, so let's go back now and have a look at this uh, the riff here. So this is a way of playing the riff. Like I'm going to show you a couple of different approaches, but the first one I think that you should check out. So second fret, semitone bend, release on the, from the fourth fret. Now the chord is E flat, but if you use this version, that's sixth fret, fifth fret, and third fret on the uh, fifth, uh, fourth, and third strings. That's a nice way of playing this chord, but you get the melody note you want there. And then you can leave third finger down, first finger goes up, one second finger goes down. And this is a way of playing a G chord. Okay, it's this part of a G bar chord, but just the middle portion. So you can have F, riff, E flat, G, C. And then this, you get this nice motion, B flat, B to the C. The C chord. Real, real nice. So that particular one is the one that I would be using when I'm going into another verse, when I'm going into a vocal thing. It's keeping it in the same part of the neck. Uh, but when it's going into the bridge part, I think it's easier, nicer to do something a little different there for the bridge. So I'm moving that, that same riff up an octave. So it's fifth fret, seventh fret, semitone bend, release, back. Now we want an E flat chord with a B flat on top. Now you could do this. I find that a really awkward grip. So what I do is this kind of chili peppers approach where I'm just missing out the third string. So it's sixth fret, eighth fret, muted, eighth fret, sixth fret. Okay, I think that's a really nice way of getting that top note. That, that just feels all cramped to me to do that. But if, if this version like that works well for you and you can jump to it easy, then do that too. It really is a, your choice there, what, which way you're going to do that. And then if I want to get that B note there on the top of a G chord, I could have done it that way, but I feel like that's a nicer one. So we have F, E flat, G, now we're going to an A for the bridge. And this is the one in order to get that motion and have that as a top note. I think this is a really nice A chord to go to just for that bit. Open fifth string, seventh fret on the fourth string, sixth fret on the third string, open second string, and little finger down on the ninth fret. So you get the idea. You 
get that nice voice leading going up to the A. And then for the bridge when the singing starts, it's an A. I'm not sure whether it's really an E with a um, E with a G sharp bass or an A with an A, A with a G sharp bass. But I like the sound of the A and just stepping down the bass note to the G sharp, to the F sharp, to the E. It's just a nice. And then to D, G. And then there's a riff that's different the first time round, the second time round. So let me just do those chords again. So it's A. Third finger drops down on the G sharp and mutes the fifth string. Then I'm using my thumb. Some people use their second finger to play that F sharp note. And then, uh, yeah, just lift it off. So you've got that low E, D, and then G. The first time it does a chromatic run from the fifth fret down to open, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, open. actually I'm thinking, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, four, one. Same thing again. As far as the chords go, D, second time though, okay back into the verse, that's C, that's the third fret of the fifth string, second fret open, third fret on the thicker string, seventh fret on the fifth string, fifth fret leading down to that C bass note. Same rhythm. One, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, four, one. Okay, let me just play that whole bridge through again. So um, it's gone from here, this fancy chord. It's going to be A. You're asking me, will my love grow? I don't know. solo it's the same sequence as the verse all of the way through but because at the end of the solo it's going back into a vocal I'd be inclined to go and use that one back into another verse the, the final verse something in the way she knows uh, and then at the end of that I would go back to because it goes to the A major once then this time, you can slow it down if you want, however much. Now the last chord there is a C. Just sounds like a straight C. I was playing a C69 just to give it a bit more of a sense of finality there, which is a eighth fret, nothing, seven, seven, eight, eight. But you, you definitely want that C top note. You can play C6 if you want. sure that's the quite the right vibe there but any of those things would work fine as well so whenever I learn a tune like this I always feel like the most rewarding part is trying to explore it on my own and see what things I might be able to bring to it to kind of make it my own version and it's something I'd really encourage you to do to try to push your own boundaries of what you can play ideas that you've have uh, expanding your chord vocabulary just trying to push it out a little bit you know the the we're not learning it exactly the same as the record anyway, so there's no kind of pressure for you to be playing it the, exactly the way I've showed you. And I, th I think it's a great thing to go like, well, just do it this way. There's those chords. Well, I'm going to try doing it this or trying to do it that way. And just, yeah, re explore your own limits. Learn some new chord grips. Find new ways of playing the things that you used to play. Explore playing the rhythms. There's so many different things here to explore. Uh, some of those uh, chord grips like the minor chord to the minor major 7 to the minor 7 to the to the five chord, the dominant chord. It's a real common sequence. A lot of, it happens quite a lot in Beatles songs and in other pop and jazz tunes. So it's the kind of thing where you, if you explore it and you learn different approaches to it, you'll find yourself using those particular chord grip sequences uh, over and over again once you figure them out. So 
and it's you know there are set ones that you can do like i've just shown you one but you know there are plenty more so i would have a go at exploring it on your own and see what else you can come up with as well so that's enough of the rhythm stuff let's have a quick look at the solo too just slowly first of all because some of you probably pick it up from that so we're starting here one The solo starts, this little lick here, it's outlining the C major chord. The second lick, it's got a little bend there in the middle. It's bending the uh, chord tone up to the sixth. It gives that sound, which is interesting because it's played over the C major seven. Let's see, now C major seven. The third lick is played over C seven. Okay, this is all over the C7 sound. Again, he's kind of highlighting here the 6th. Kind of clashes against the 7th a bit in a nice way. That's just a shift there. Uh, so it's sliding with the first finger, 13th fret and twice. Tone, uh, bend and release. Up to the 15th fret, tone, bend, release, 13 finishing on that A. That's the first section. Four, one. Four, one. Okay, this. Then. So this is sliding up to the 14th fret on the third string, and then the 13th fret on the second string. Sliding up to the ninth fret, playing the on the third string, and then eighth fret on the second string. Down to this second fret on the uh, third string, which is where it's got the D. Uh, so he's playing there, second fret, fourth fret, then sliding up to the seventh fret. There's still outlining the D. You can clearly now this is this is highlighting the G chord tones just goes a little bit crazy there ninth fret eighth fret sixth fret on the thinner string 12 11 10 it's a really interesting little line to, the rest of it's so chord tony and then it just suddenly bursts out Now we're into the A minor major 70 part. Uh, so this is just a, a bouncing bend from the 7th fret down to the 5th fret. Second time, third time. Now third time it kind of goes from, it's just go, once it's released to the 5th fret, 2nd finger is immediately sliding up to the ninth fret, still on the 3rd string. 8th fret on the 2nd string, 10th fret tone bend, release and play it, 8, 10, 8, 5, that's the main line there, now I should point out that little uh, bit of bendy here, I'm sure if I gave it enough listens and enough detailed concentration, I could probably get it just like the record, but it feels like a whole lot of work for very little gain. Really, it doesn't feel, it's not specifically in time. So I'd experiment with that. As long as you come out of it, okay, that's kind of the key moment they will be getting back out of that into the, get you know, the timing of that part. But again, it'll just be listening to it. I think uh, 
a solo like this, we could go through and do all of the count and all of that sort of stuff. But I, I feel like listening to it a few times, it's such a melodic, strong solo uh, that that is sitting perfectly for the song that if you do the same thing and just listen to it a bunch of times, learn it chunk by chunk, make sure you've got the finger mechanics under control and you're bending in tune, that kind of stuff. And once you're through that, then just a bunch of listens will help you be able to fit it in place. Uh, and do... I would recommend as part of your learning of these solos is kind of studying what's going on with the notes, the, seeing the way, what's the function of the notes that he's playing against the chords that are going in the background so you can understand how he's making the changes and how the notes that you're playing are related to the chord uh, that he's soloing over. It'll give you ideas for your own improvisations. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. It was certainly a pleasure for me to dig a little deeper on this tune and learn it properly. Uh, it's one that's probably going to stick around in my repertoire. It's just loads of really fun things to explore the ways that you can move the chords around you know this i've settled on this kind of arrangement but i've been exploring it for a couple of days and there are so many different things that i'm i want to play around with a little bit more beautiful one for jamming on as well improvising over that chord sequence is really good fun you can kind of target notes or you can kind of leave out some of that stuff and keep it a bit simpler uh yeah beautiful beautiful uh jam and tune uh, if you like this one there's plenty more beatles over on the website go and check it out uh justinguitar.com forward slash songs do a search for the beatles and you'll find all of them there nicely lined up for you uh if you're over on youtube i really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button hit me a hit the bell if you want to get notified when i'm doing uh, live transcriptions or any of that sort of stuff or there's new lessons of course uh yeah have yourself a fantastic day and i'll see you for plenty more very soon you'll take care bye bye